Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to New Jack City. Today, we are talking about takeoff. R.I.P. to the GOAT. Um, a lot of things happened. As y'all know, he had his memorial service yesterday as of this uh, video coming out because it's 1252. So he had, his, he had his memorial service in Atlanta. I thought it was going to be filmed, but I guess the, the family decided that they, they didn't want to film the, uh, the actual service. Which me personally, I do have kind of a because I've seen people was like, oh yeah, I'm I'm glad that that family didn't want the uh, the people to, uh, you know, um, they didn't live stream the service and stuff like that. But my thing personally, now it's his family; they can do what they want, and respectfully, I agree with their decision. But me personally, um, I would have I would have live streamed this. I would have live streamed the service because, in all honesty, it's a celebrate. It's supposed to be funerals are supposed to be a remembrance. And a celebration of him going to a different journey. Me personally, when I see people leave this earth, now obviously he's 28 years old, so it's a tragedy. So yes, as a selfish, as us as being human, we are going to be selfish and we are going to be crying and mourning because we didn't want him to go. Definitely that young, but it's supposed. But we look at funerals and just you know death, such in a selfish way. Even you know when the person is old and stuff like that. You know, we look at it in a selfish way, like, oh, I wanted them to stay longer, stuff like that. But we all have our time to go. And at the end of the day, if you believe in God and you believe in, you know, a higher being, we're supposed to believe that he's going to a better place than here. So it's supposed to be a celebration. But having that being said, he's has fan he has fans all over the world. And <clears throat> a lot of people, definitely the families, they don't understand that when someone becomes into the public eye, they are no longer just your child anymore. They, they're still your child, but they're, now, how can I say this? They're now a public figure to the whole world. So now people have a connection to them. They might not have a personal connection like you do, but they still have a connection to that artist. Like me personally, I have a connection to Frank Ocean or Marian. I love those two. And if something tragic was to happen to them, I would definitely want to go out. I would go out of my way to make sure I make it to their service. Make sure I go, you know, say my, uh, my, you know, give my condolences to the family and, um, you know, say my farewells to their funerals and stuff like that, because I have a connection to them. Their music touched me in a certain place. It's the same thing when it comes to uh, take off in the Migos. They, they touch certain people to a certain place. Oh, so, no, I don't agree with the people talking about. I'm glad the family didn't uh, live stream and stuff like that. Their fans, what his fans wants to see him for the last, for this last go. That's all I want to say. But having that being said, his family could do whatever they want. And I, and I have no problem with them not live streaming, but I just, I'm just saying that for the, uh, the people who are trying to say like, oh yeah, it was a good thing for them and stuff like that. Like, oh, they're looking for clout. No, it's not looking for clout, bro. Oh, people are weird. Anyway, <clears throat> a lot of people had a lot to say about his uh, funeral and I'm going to be reading off some stuff, right? So offset. Offset honors take off during speech and says he changed the few, changed the culture of music. That flow came from takeoff. Ooh. <clears throat> I don't know. There's another person too on Twitter who says something that kind of resonated with me. As y'all know, I'm 28 years old. Takeoff when he died, he's 20. He's my age actually. He's 28 as well. RIP to take off again. Uh, I believe Quavo is 30 or 31. He's like two or three years older than takeoff. And I think uh, Offset is the same age, too. I think he's like in his 30s or late 20s as well. But pretty much this user, this Twitter user said, if you are in your late 20s or early 30s, you remember a time of the Migos. Because a lot of people don't, when the Migos came out, honestly, when the Migos came out, I think they came out around like 20, was it 16? 2015, no, no, it's even earlier than that thing. Yeah, like 2015, 2016, I think. Somewhere around that time. A lot of us remember Versace. And when Versace came out, that was being played in the club all day, every day. That, like, that song would always come out. Like, that was it. If you didn't play Versace in the club, the club was weak. It just, it is what it is. Now, people was playing Versace, right? And then when Drake hopped on, <sighs> damage. Drake did damage to it, bro. And a lot of people remember that. The, you know, the Versace and, 
you know, the fight night. I'm a not that yeah, like fight night. So Migos has a certain place in our hearts. So when Takeoff died, you know, it, it hit people a little different. It's the same thing with Nipsey. Same thing with Nipsey. I remember the first time I heard Nipsey. And um, I uh, I was on to Nipsey when he dropped the marathon continues because he dropped the marathon and I heard about Nipsey, but I didn't really listen to him, listen to him like that. But when TMC dropped, it was right around the time Tyga had dropped his uh, Black Thoughts 2 mixtape. It was right around that time. Either it was either before or after he dropped Black Thoughts 2. But I think I want to I want to say it was. I want to say it was before I forgot, but I was in high school during that time when I first heard T uh, uh, Nipsey hustle and everybody was talking about, Oh, he's the greatest. He's the greatest. And I always kept saying Kendrick is better than Nipsey. And then I started listening to Nipsey. I'm like, damn, Nipsey hit different. And my, so these people connect to us just a little different because we grew up with them. So watching someone, you know, die like that is like us missing our own, like, you know, a piece of us. It's, Takeoff took a piece with us when he died. And it sucks because no one ever saw that coming definitely from Takeoff out of everybody. We never seen that coming from Takeoff when we weren't prepared. It was just, it came so left. So, you know, but I thought that was really interesting that that, uh, you know, Twitter user said because I'm like, yeah, man, he, he's absolutely correct. But uh, let me read a little bit of what these people said too. Um, so Meek Mill, he couldn't come. And Meek Mill, he said something uh, about, basically, he just, he tweeted out, uh, this is what he tweeted. He said, RIP to take off. I barely believe in this ish. We live it, we living in. Prayers to your mother, family, and the whole QC. You changed the rules for sure, my boy. And I apologize for missing your funeral. I'm a forever rep, y'all boys. Facts. Uh, Cardi B says something as well. All right, so let me go to Lil' Kim real quick. Lil' Kim, Lil Kim she... Remember sweetest and funny, funniest moments with takeoff since love to Quavo offset and family. So she said, y'all know this be so hard for me, especially when I was just with you guys a couple weeks ago before Migos is one of before Migos is one of my top favorite groups of all time. Likewise, and anyone who knows me knows how much I love them. They were so in sync with each other on stage. They all moved in the same perfect time. That's facts. I don't know if y'all ever seen. Thankfully, I was able to see Migos twice perform, and they do. Like, the way they move, like, you can tell, like, it's really, it's, it's kind of coordinated. It's like, they because they don't dance, but I don't know. Yeah, she's right about that, though. Like, it, it was, I can't really explain it. You would just have to be there to see it. But they are definitely in sync, in sync when they're on stage. But uh, she said, in sync when each other's on stage they all move in the same perfect timing it was fascinating to watch them and every time i saw take off off stage out somewhere out somewhere he made me smile or laugh not because he was smiling back because most of the time he wasn't <laughs> facts all out loud but because he always had a blunt in his mouth to vibe vibe the f out he does in his own zone and out of the way he ain't give a f who you was he gave that same energy truly one of a kind he made my heart smile. I love him. Yeah, man, that's was. Mm. She said more, but I'm gonna just leave it at that. But yeah, man, uh, takeoff was definitely. I'm talking about him like I knew him personally. Let me stop. But <laughs> but listen, just remembering takeoff like the the interactions that I see I seen him because uh, I saw him perform at a club and that actually went to one of his concerts that he had when he was out here in uh, Anaheim. He was uh, he was in Anaheim and I had went to go see him. Uh, I went with this uh, girl I was talking to at the time. She's she's one of my friends too, and um, yeah, she took me to go see him, and uh, yeah, it was cool. But yeah, that dude stay smoking. Like this dude always had a blunt on stage. He had a blunt in the club. He wasn't even supposed to smoke, but obviously he's the he's one of the people of the Migos, so he was able to smoke. He had a blunt on stage. He had a blunt when he was performing. Before he did his verse, he was smoking. And then he stopped. Got had the had the the blunt right here doing it to the mic as soon as his verse was done. Back to the smoking. Like, bro was funny. <laughs> that is absolutely true. And then um, let me just read what Cardi B said before I end this. So uh this is what Cardi B wrote. Uh okay, she it, hers was kind of lengthy too. So take off your ultimate your ultimate sorry. Take off. Your untimely passing has brought a great deal of pain and sorrow to so many lives. The impact you had in this world 
the so considerable and we have struggled to grasp this tra this tragedy i am heartbroken but i am grateful for all the precious memories we got to share while you were while you were here with us this has truly been a nightmare and the pain is incomparable uh incomparable the emptiness you your brothers are feeling is unbearable and i pray that you give Offset, Quavo, and your friends and family the strength to keep going as they are trying to cope with this loss. I believe that angels send signs and beautiful dreams to loved ones to assure them that they that they're watching them and they're okay and happy. Send your mom some of the some of those. As a Migos fan, it hurts it hurts me to look at pictures and videos of y'all together. Me too. <sighs> me too. And hearing y'all songs that changed the music industry and moved the culture and had the clubs lit. It hurts because I know it will never be the same again. Yup, you stated facts, Cardi. But I know your bros and y'all fans will make sure the world never forgets the impact you made. I will remember your remarkable talent and your dope ASS pers personality. I pray that you are at peace and in paradise because you deserve every bit of it. I know God opened the heavenly gates for you with a warm embrace, rest and power take off. I will, I will also love you for life and after. Beautiful. And yeah, she's right. I don't know if y'all, I don't know if y'all, y'all doing it. I've been listening to, I'm not going to lie, since Migos has died, I've been listening to their music and just remembering how it made me feel. Um, I remember when, uh, just before, you know, just a couple of what, just like a year or two ago, actually, right before they dropped Culture 3, I remember they were dropped and dropping little intros and um, we heard Modern Day and we heard a little bit of straightening and I'm like, damn, these songs is hard. Migos is back. And um, yeah, even now, like I'm listening to their old music, like Fight Night. It made me feel some type of way. I li just, I literally just listened to that before I went on here, and I was just like, "Damn, bro, like they got really gone." And you know, it's not gonna settle in until for a couple months. It's the same thing with Nipsey. I remember LA was literally, LA felt depressed. You can tell it was just people were just so depressed when Nipsey died for like a cool week. And me personally. Um, I was listening, I was bumping this stuff heavy and I had to like cool off and stop listening to it for like, you know, like two or three months so I can just let it, you know, sit, you know, cause sometimes you gotta let that hurt just sit on you for a little bit and then you can just, you know, you can let it go. But I had to sit on it and then, uh, yeah, now I'm able to listen to Nipsey again like that without feeling like, damn, well, I still feel like, damn, we lost them, but it doesn't hurt right now. Like how I'm listening to the Migos, you can listen, I'm listening to it and I'm still like, Ugh. We really lost takeoff but anyway r.i.p to take off uh yeah i hope that you you know you look over your fans you look over your family and uh, i know he's in a better place and again you guys remember death death is only the beginning there's another there's there's something else that comes but there's something else that comes after and i know we lost him at 28 I know a lot of us are sad and, you know, you know, we think about it and we always, you know, we're crying and stuff like that because we lost takeoff, but we got to remember he's in a better place and it's only the, and it's only the beginning. We should be happy that he's in a better place versus him still being here. Right. Look at, look at, the, look at the glass halfway full. I think they say, <laughs> anyway how do you guys feel about it leave in the comment section you know get some rips condolences in the comments give this video a big thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel all right i will see y'all next time all right living living just enough living just for the city living 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 just enough